We have with us w William Edward Binney. He worked with the NSA. He resigned in 01. He was a whistleblower for many years now, and he was such a good wish whistleblower that he was the subject of an FBI investigation, many of them, and the FBI raided his home in 2007, but he still speaks out against Barack Obama's NSA uh, data collection policies. He now joins us because he believes we are now moving towards a police state. William Binney, welcome to the Savage Nation. Oh, good day. How are you doing? William, uh, you said last year we are like that far from a turnkey totalitarian state. Isn't that correct? Yes, I did, yeah. Uh, are we actually there yet? Well, if not, we're very, pretty, very, certainly very close. I mean, the entire mechanism to make that happen is in place now. Some of it's being used currently uh, by the uh, FBI and the DEA as a, uh, uh, as a means or using the NSA collection as a means of arresting people. Arresting people for actual crimes or political crimes or both? Well, I'm, I'm, sure it's, uh, I'm sure it's probably both, but uh, I think the, the arrests they're making are primarily for crimes. Uh, okay, so they're using NSA data and, and methods, rather, which uh, were allegedly put in place to stop terrorism, which is now being used to stop counterfeiters, uh, bank robbers. Everyone say, well, that's good, but that's not really good is what you're saying. I mean, the domestic internal collection that NSA is doing has nothing to do with terrorism. But it has a lot to do with crime, and that's what the FBI and the DEA, that's what they're using it for. They're the primary users of that data. That Mr. Was, Binney, you, you worked at the NSA. People should know that. Yep. May, may I ask what you did there? What did you do? You worked there for 32 years? As a civilian, yes, and uh, the three years as a military, yeah. You were instrumental in the creation of the NSA surveillance program for digital information. So you were early on very knowledgeable about uh, these instruments, correct? Yeah, well, unfortunately, it was my design, yeah. So, so you feel a little guilty for this. It's sort of a Frankenstein. Is that what it is? Yeah, I'm, af I'm afraid so. Now, look, you resigned from the NSA in 01 under the Bush administration. Is that true? Yes. Right. But uh, Mr. why did you resign so early on in 01? Were they randomly spying on Americans then on the Bush? Well, that's when it all started. That started in October of 2001, right after 9-11. They, they ordered all the equipment and everything in and were put it together and then started the program to do the uh, – from the telecoms, they were bringing in all their billing data on every phone call in the United States. Uh, and that was, uh, that was where I saw the line. They crossed the line there. That was, uh, that was a violation of the constitutional rights of everybody. Because not only do they – it's not just a number like Feinstein says. I mean, she doesn't know what she's talking about. That, they have a reverse lookup. I mean, the, the, uh, three weeks ago, uh, 60 Minutes did an expose on, uh, on uh, NSA. It was a positive one, and they showed some, some, uh, some uh, slides there of things they were doing, like uh, the contact chaining, which is what they're looking at, two, two hops away from a terrorist in Somalia. Or, right. And then they showed that, and then they showed another screen where it listed U.S. numbers with uh, – with, uh, uh, state the numbers were in and also the city they were in and the and the dates and times of context well that told me right there that they had a reverse lookup of the entire phone book of the united states including names and addresses because you cannot get the you can't get the city for a number i mean if you go into the phone book on the front pages you'll see the list of all of the area codes sure that you can get the state from the area code but you can't get the city unless you look at the exact number every individual number in the book but when you're not arguing, I want to understand you. First of all, I'm leery of an organization that exists primarily to stop so-called terrorism that failed us on at least four major terrorist events, including the Boston Marathon bombing, even though they had the Sonoff uh, boys in their, in their uh, site. Can you, can you speak about why they let that one slip through or how that happened since they're so expert at catching all this data? Well, I mean, the, the reason they did that is simply because they have too much data to look at. They can't look through it all. It's a, I mean, but because they, they were Muslims from uh, Dagestan, they were sort of not to be looked at, but a uh, nun from Milwaukee is on, on the watch list? <laughs> right. 
I know what you're saying, but uh, that's just the – you see, that's the point of the, when you take in too much data, you become so, so incompetent or in, in inept in finding the targets that are really important. Ah, that's why. And, of course, Eric Holder last week said he's going to eliminate religion as an organizing principle in any national security investigations. Now, how can you do that while almost every terrorist event of the, of the past 15 to 20 years uh, have been surrounded – excuse me, perpetrated by those of the Muslim faith. How can you eliminate that as an organizing principle? Well, you can't, obviously. I mean, it, uh, it has, obviously has to be a factor. There's well, look, I don't want to drag you into my political uh, you know, point of view because I'm not even asking you where you stand politically. But what I really want to ask is something that every listener to this program is probably asking themselves, Mr. Binney. Remember who, who they're listening to. They're listening to a man who worked for over 32 years with the NSA, a man who actually created the NSA surveillance program for digital information. You're also the NSA's senior technical director. So this is coming so-called from the horse's mouth. Mr. Binney, are they spying on high-profile media people such as Michael Savage, Rush Limbaugh, and others? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Now, when you say spying, does that mean they have a dedicated agent whose job it is to listen to me eight hours a day, three of them a day, 24 hours a day? Uh, I don't know if they have a dedicated agent, but they certainly have, uh, have e either, they, either they are reviewing everything that you, uh, you, in terms of who you're calling or who you're emailing, or, or they are at least uh, reviewing it uh, at the end of the day or weekly at least. Well, I'm insulted because I've said before that unless they assign three agents full-time to me, I'm uh, considering, I, I really find that to be a grave insult. I'm worth at least three full-time agents. I mean, after all, if I call my dog groomer, I wouldn't want them to miss that. Or if uh, I call one of my family members and ask them how they're feeling uh, because they injured their leg, they certainly have a right to know that. I mean, that's a very important uh, uh, event, isn't it? It's exactly. I know what you're saying. That's right. Of, well, no, this, 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 of course, is unconstitutional. It's illegal. Can a citizen sue to find out if they're being spied upon? Well, you see, that's part of what they, what they were doing is they claim uh, what they did was give the uh, re uh, telecommunications company retroactive immunity. And they would claim national security or you don't have standing. So unless you could show that they actually had records on you, which are all kept secret, by the way, so you don't have a chance to see them, uh, unless you can show that, well, you don't have standing. And that's what they're arguing in the courts. That's, that's oh. they, keep, they keep you out of the courts. I see. We have no standing as Americans to find out if we're being spied upon by uh, illicit, illegal activity, uh, meaning illicit and Ill through illicit and illegal activity by government officials. This is very serious stuff. You know better than I what's really going on here. This is very much along the lines of what went on in Eastern Europe under the Stasi, only it's on steroids, isn't it? Yes, that's right. The Soviet Union didn't have this level of spying capacity, did it? And the KGB wanted to do exactly the same thing. They just didn't have the capacity. So you're, you know, this is what, what's eerie to me. This is what frightens me, Mr. Binney. You spoke out after working for 32 years, and this was under the Bush uh, administration. The FBI raided your home for what? Uh, to stop me from talking to, uh, to anybody. They didn't want me to go to the Senate Judiciary Committee and tell them, for example, all the programs that Attorney General Gonzalez didn't talk to him, didn't mention to them when he was testifying to the uh, terrorist surveillance programs of the president. So what happened? They they certainly didn't. Certain, didn't you know? They didn't stop. They didn't stop you, did they? Uh, well, I mean, they. they well, it, see what happens when you get raided by the the FBI and they and they confiscate your material and you know they give you warrants and stuff like that. You then lawyer up, and when you lawyer up, your lawyers tell you, don't talk to anybody, don't do anything. So there's that period of time where you don't, you're kind of in, uh, you isolate, you know, you kind of isolate yourself, stay away. Of course, you're frightened. Of course, you're frightened. You don't know what they're going to do next. But you're speaking out now. This is not the first show you've been on. You've been on big shows. What would you like to see happen? How do we stop them? I, I personally would like to see a special prosecutor go in and investigate them all, everybody in the administration of the Congress and the courts, and then, and then hold them all accountable for what they did in court. Mm, wouldn't that be nice to live in America again? Wouldn't that be wonderful to wake up and see America? Wouldn't it be great to have the equivalent of a Watergate prosecutor 
and special counsel looking into the NSA spying scandal. I wonder if that could happen in our country today, given the fact that we have lost the press and have no opposition party to press this issue with the, uh, with, with, uh, the proper authorities. Who are the proper authorities? Eric Holder? Right, and, and the point is that they're all a part of it. They're all culpable in it, so they're not going to do anything. Do you the fear court. for your, Mr. Binney, do you fear for your safety? I, I don't know if that's an, 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 um, a, a legitimate question that you even want to answer. Don't answer it if you don't feel that it's legitimate. Well, I don't, but I, I'm not going to stop no matter what they do because uh, I'm going to keep speaking out because, if, you know, if they do something to me, then you all know what they are, okay? And you well, know, we, know who the, we know what they are already, Mr. Binney. We know what they are. But, you know, you said something at the outset of this interview that is absolutely eerie. What you said was, no, we're not a police state yet, but all of the elements are in place for that. Could you please elaborate on that point? Well, right now, there are, the police are only going after supposed criminals, I guess, the evidence they have in criminals, but they've got all the rest of the evidence on anybody else. But, uh, you know, uh, some, some, the, uh, the IRS is tied into the, the DEA and the NSA database through this Special Operations Division, so they have access to all this networking and relationships. So they can target people like the Tea Party, the Occupy group, or any religious group in the country. Just by looking at the social networks, you can do that. What do you mean, target them? What if they're not committing a crime? It doesn't matter. See, that's the well, what, I just don't understand. Wait, I understand what you're saying. It doesn't matter. They can target them for surveillance, but what can they actually arrest them for if they're not committing a crime? Well, they're not arresting it right now, but what they're using is the IRS to delay them getting uh, uh, tax-exempt status and things like that. Yes, of course. But you're saying if this keeps up, if this is not stopped, eventually it will become something more sinister than what it is today. That's, that, unfortunately, people, people do that. I mean, given, if you give people power, sooner or later they, they use it. Yes, and absolute power corrupts absolutely, as Lord Acton taught all of us who remember anything about history. Can, they, can this monster be stopped? Can Frankenstein be the, uh, uh, reverse engineered? Yes, it can. And, and the, the, only, the only way it can is if people start speaking up against this and just tell their representatives and, and senators, if you, don't, if you don't help stop this stuff, you're fired. And, and then follow through and fire them. I don't care who's on the ballot. It doesn't matter whether they're Democrat or Republican. Vote for somebody who's never been there. I mean, we could not do any worse if we randomly picked from the phone book to, to select our representative. <laughs> I agree. That's very true. It, it's absolutely true. We couldn't do any worse. Mr. Binney, you're, you're actually an American hero along the lines of the Founding Fathers. You've risked everything to tell the truth. Can you stay with us for a moment and take a call or two on the Savage Nation? Yeah, sure I can. Okay, folks, you've got one opportunity to speak with one of the, the true heroes of America, a real great American, as opposed to a radio talk show host. We'll be right back.